So the components of brain retraining, it's a number of steps that there's an assessment in the office of what stage would be appropriate for a patient to start in. And after they start, going through the steps, um, some people are able to go fairly quickly that the exercises don't cause increased pain. Some people really have to stick with one step for quite a while. Um, the first step that I would have, if I assessed that patients were not ready to start with mirror therapy, the last stage, the recognized program, the middle stage, the first stage is are they able to watch somebody else do movements or slowly do movements themselves. Once they were okay with that, that that didn't cause any increase in pain, I would move up to the next step. And that is graded motor imagery. This is a one of the programs that is most commonly that I use a recognized program. And that component is a series of steps that somebody would do usually on the computer of looking at pictures, identifying if they're left or right, doing those pictures. For example, if somebody had pain in their hand from CRPS, they would be looking at pictures of hands, first identifying left and right, then imagining putting their hand in the same position as they're seeing on the computer. And the last stage would actually be moving their own hand. The idea of using the mirror that somebody places their injured arm, hand, leg behind the mirror and is really looking at reflections of their non-symptomatic side moving. And the brain sort of pays attention to it's seeing normal movement, it's seeing comfortable movement, and slowly working through this, there's a decrease in pain. And we do know in particular with the mirror treatment that doing this exercise results in changes in the brain and as those changes happen, the brain is generating less pain signals and somebody's pain goes down. We're getting, we're sort of accessing the brain through the visual system. So it's just watching this over and over. So you're doing great. Small, comfortable movements, slow movements, so you can really concentrate on the movement. Okay, now you can just put your arm down. What did you notice with doing that? Well, I noticed how this hand kind of wanted to jump in. The right and, hand, good. Right. Okay. And, and there were some sensory, like you'd almost, you could feel the, the first finger that I have pain in mm -hmm. and, the, and the thumb area where I have pain in. But it, it's, it's almost as if it's a, it's a workout without moving okay. my hand inside here. Okay. So. so to me, it's also good that it felt like comfortable to, like to mm -hmm. want to move the right side, which is good. Mm -hmm. So when you're moving your left not symptomatic hand, did you notice any increase in discomfort on the right side? No, I didn't. Okay, so that's good. If you had noticed, then I would have you do like more like even more gentle movements. Right. So now I want to keep going a second, and now, because you do have some symptoms in, like in your fingers and wrists, I want to do some more movements just of the, like the hands and finger. Okay. So again, just watch me for a second. So doing things like slow, doing fingers alone. So doing things like that. And again, you're going to be watching the reflection, so try that. Yeah, they want to jump in on the right hand side. But that's okay because I'm not moving it. So any problem with doing finger movements? Any problems you notice on the right? No, not at this Good. time. Okay. So it's a great program. It's it takes a lot of work from the patient's side but it's not medication, it's not invasive treatments, and it can really, research has shown that it's very effective for some patients with CRPS.